Hi there, good morning, welcome back here on Prime Morning. It's time for us to get into News Flash. If you're joining us here for the first time, a big thank you to you for making time for us here on the show. Your contributions and comments, we don't take them for granted. You can join us here on the show by sending your messages to our WhatsApp line. It's very active and you can also do so on Facebook. We're streaming live on Facebook. It's Joy Prime TV. That's where you can drop your messages. And the first morning we're taking a look at the majority in Parliament. Now there has been a shakedown. And yes, uh, uh, as it was actually speculated a couple of uh, days ago, uh, the majority uh, speaker in parliament has been changed. Uh, Osei Chairman uh, Sabonso has resigned and uh, taking over from him is our thing of market. We're also going to be delving into the issue of uh, the LGBTQ and its uh, matters arising. Now, I think your market has been considering, you know, a, a, a second look at the entire custodian sentence. But the speaker has thrown that case out. We'll be looking at that conversation as well. These are more coming up here on the show. Before that, we're getting to the front pages of the newspapers to check out what has been reported. And then I introduce to you my representations in the studio as far as the two political parties are concerned, the NPP and the NDC. We'll be joining us, uh, we'll be joined here also by the uh, senior member of CPP. Uh, our very own lawyer will also be joining us here on the show as well. But get ready to spice up your TV viewing experience with Joy Prime. Our little kitchen talent are turning up the heat on Big Chef Junior. Now showcasing cooking prowess that will leave you craving for more. And it's on Sundays at 5 p.m. Make sure you tune in and you don't miss out on all the excitement that comes with having special dishes prepared in the kitchen. Now, you also want to wait a bit. There's a new kitty wonderland in town for kids. Paradise is what you also have to, you know, uh, entertain yourself with. It comes with a lot of fun and it knows no bounds. And so please do well to also check that up as well. And of course, on Fridays, on a more serious note, it's all about the fun and laughter. On a more serious note, because uh, there uh, might be a lot of seriousness when you can actually have, uh, you know, so much that you get you uh, seriously entertained. All right. So that also happens at 8 p.m. every Friday on Joy Prime. And then you get to start, uh, you know, your, your beautiful time with sports and uh, you want to brace yourselves for exciting sports zone analysis that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Now for the fashion forward dreamers, dive into the world of Africa's model scout, a reality show like no other. And this is what Joy Prime has in store for you as we get into the weekend as well. Now your ultimate TV experience is just a tuning away on Joy Prime. And you don't want to miss out on all of that. So make sure that you're making time. But let's talk about remembering. And this is something very, very exciting that is coming your way. So uh, it's commemorating Black History Month. And remember, it is a multimedia production that explores the historical accounts of the Middle Passage slavery and emancipation, inspired by the Mafia Suite and the teachings of Bishop Reverend Dr. Johnny Ray Youngblood. Now, remembering is an American history uh, told by African voices, listening contemporary and African dance with audiovisual elements, including spoken word, music, and African drumming. And it's going to be staged at the National Theatre on the 24th of February. You don't miss out on that at all. You grab your ticket. It's going for a cool 50 Ghana cities. You have a ticket. And if you're a student, you're buying a ticket for 30 Ghana cities and you can be a part of it. And so uh, the rehearsal has been very intense and every single cast member is ready to bring their A game on and you don't want to miss out on that. All you need to do is to grab your ticket and let's all meet at the National Theatre and enjoy the very best of what Remembering has got for us and trust me, you will love it. You will love it so much. Now, uh, we'll talk more about some of the things that will be happening here on the show, but Pizza Man Chicken Man has got something special for you. Our branches here in Accra and Kumase are doing so much in terms of providing you with good food and uh, deals that would ensure that all the members of your family are able to eat something. So just come through, let us know how much you want, how many you are, and you're definitely going to be sorted. That Pizza Man Chicken Man is always and always flaming hot and you need to grab yourself one of those all right so yeah we'll check in and enjoy the very best of it right here on the show we're going to be getting on the front page of the newspapers i introduce my guest in the studio to you and then we'll begin with uh our major issue uh for the morning so the daily graphic is here 
And on the front page of the Daily Graphic, it says that ahead of 2024 elections, avoid a hate speech, Peace Council tells political parties. And uh, it's captured on the front page of Daily Graphic. Government committed to resolve Ahmed Swali's murder, Attorney General assures. And in Daily Graphic, drives his transport ministry to RTI Commission. Uh, page 20 has got a story on that as well. More people with higher education unemployed. The GSS uh, reports on that. So the Ghana Statistical Services is reporting on that story. You can read about it. At the back page, contractor locks uh, school over unpaid services and burial rights of uh, Sianahine announced. That's also uh, the daily graphic for today. Let's get to the daily guide uh, and uh, on the front page it says that Political parties appoint leadership, uh, Speaker says so. And uh, sexy Don Don killed JB Dankwa, a uh, uh, investigator says so. And Parliament chases MRIF for over 12 million US dollars a Japan expense. And away from that, Kumasi International Airport ready in April. And I've seen videos of that. And uh, thanks to my uh, very good friend, uh, Lexi Wahine, uh, who shared that on uh, Instagram. And I've seen, I've seen the video of Kumasi Airport. It looks really nice, really, really nice. And I'm excited about it. Uh, but the unfortunate thing is that a lot of our family members will not be coming to Accra before they get to wherever they're going to. They'll just fly all the way from Kumasi and they're gone. And so we'll not be able to part ways with them like traditionally we would do when they have to come through, you know, Kotoka International Airport to travel to wherever they're going to. But that's a good news. I, I love what I saw. And so maintenance has always been the problem. I'm hoping that we'll be able to maintain. Uh, you know, and keep it well. And Confanoshi uh, Teaching Hospital loses 200 uh, nurses in a year. The brain drain situation is still on, yes. And away from that, to chill, quit buying at the end of the season. And Haland will shut your mouth. And Hats Board inspect Phobia House project. Brazil coach reaffirms confidence in Neymar. And uh, Haland is just doing the amazing stuff. If you're a football fan, and you check the statistics this guy has in terms of scoring. He scored almost every team in the EPL. Yes, he's, he's scored almost every team. You know, so that's Haaland over there for you. I, I, I like him so much. Uh, it's the reason I'm supporting Man City anyway. So, yeah, that's what it is. Away from that, the Ghanaian Times is here this morning. It says, most authoritative newspaper. Uh, the front page has a 2 4 or say to 2 the second. And it says, said the priorities right to fix economy. Or two four say to two task a finance minister designate and away from that LGBTQ plus bill, I think your marking loses bid to substitute imprisonment with non custodial sentence and Maslock fails to recover over 291.5 million Ghana cities loan dispersed over past 12 years. We will ensure fighting 67th Independence Day anniversary celebration. The Eastern Regional Minister speaks on that. Mr. Seth Kwanye Chiampong has been captured over there as well. The new finder this morning says that uh, 14 million euro and 5 million US dollars paid uh, to uh, Kolebu uh, Konfanoshe Teaching Hospital after the military hospital project contractors. An NPA boss envisages uh, robust intra-African uh, intra oil and gas industry. BOG signs MOU with the UGBS uh, uh, DBG for research to address MSME's funding challenges and a 35 million US dollars commend the sugar factory beyond recovery, says Gahu. That's uh, the new finder uh, for today. Uh, the last paper will be the ABC newspaper on the front page. It says change in MPP majority leadership or say Chey Men Sambonsu as uh, manifesto chair as Samojan as sports committee chair. And that's uh, the change in MPP majority leadership. Dr. Baumia commiserates uh, with the Wafa Kobana Kwachi's family. And uh, Abraham Koku Adusei, others face Supreme Court contempt charge over Savia Church property. And uh, I lied against Dr. Baumia's brother, Nita Femmes Kobana Mafa says so. All right, so those are stories captured by ABC newspapers this morning here. Yeah. And uh, we're going to be moving on into our major conversation. Like I said, you can join the conversations, your contributions. You can send them to us on our WhatsApp line. Even ahead of time, we'll be reading them. And also, you can do so on Facebook where, uh, you know, you can share on real time because we're streaming live on Facebook. Now, let me introduce my guest in the studio this morning. And so we've been joined uh, here on the show by Dennis Apia Labi uh, He speaks for the NPP, National Communications Team Member. Uh, Dennis, good morning. How are you doing? 
Good morning, K. Mm. How are you too? I'm very well, thanks for being here. Good to see you. Good to see you. You're looking good as usual. Thank you. Every Thank time. You. I, I just want to know who does these things. Be, oh, I'll tell you, don't worry. Yeah. Sedem is always <laughs> in the picture. Sedem, uh, Sedem uh, of the House of Sedem is always the one, you know, making me look the way I look. But now uh, you don't look bad as well. Thank you. Yeah. But we'll be getting into Ghana Month uh, next month. Yeah. And so we'll be doing a lot of Ghana things on the show. So I'm just prompting you guys so that when you are coming at least you know that we're we doing the Ghana month here. Yeah. yeah. So throughout the month of uh, March we'll be doing Ghana month here on the show. So all of you have to try and then do some Ghanaian uh, outfits. Also in the house is Peter Mensa, the national communication team member for the NDC also joining us. He's already spotting the uh, Ghana. So the two of us look alike today. Hey bro, how are you? Ah, KMJ. Good. We can't complain. In mm. fact, uh, like I used to say, the gift of life God gives us. <laughs> and we appreciate God for that. Mm. But it is very important that uh, the system become a bit flexible mm. for the citizens. And uh, at a point when you read reports and it's indicating our unemployment rate increasing, it's so disheartening, it's so appalling, and it's cause for a deeper concern. And we as youth, uh, thank God my brother here is a youth. Uh, when we read reports like this, I, I, was, I was just reading uh, several documents yesterday and mm. I chanced on the annual household income and expenditure survey by Ghana Stat Card Service. And as a youth, I was so really, really scared the rate at which the unemployment rate is moving and then some are sorting. Meanwhile, we have been told that uh, we've, we've created 2.1 million jobs. So you ask yourself, why is the rate of unemployment going up and government and those in authorities are also lying to us that they've created 2.5 million jobs. This survey was done last year. And then according to the survey, when you go to page six of it, it says that the first three quarters of last year, Unemployment rate stood at 14.7%. Uh, the figure of unemployed youth in the country is 1.8 million. So if we have 1.8 million Ghanaians who are looking for job, they are eligible for job, and they can't find job, is 1.8 million. And government of the day, led by the vice president, is lying to us that they've created 2.1 million jobs. What should be happening is that all the 1.8 million Ghanaians who are looking for jobs should have been given jobs across the board. And then we have in excess of over 300,000, of which possibly we are engaging in child labor, mm. or we are importing people from outside to come and work for us. But that is not the case. When you go out there, there are teeming youth of Ghanaians who are stranded in the street who have graduated, who have finished their national service, and they are looking for jobs. They are not getting jobs. But leaders are lying. And the danger here is that, KMJ, yeah, so that when it happens know. that way, mm. we try to deceive the records. And policymakers will not be concerned about looking at creating a sustainable job for the youth because the figures are showing that, oh, you've created in essence, uh, 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 employment opportunities. So the figure is saying that 1.8 million Ghanaians are not having jobs, and you are saying you've created 2.1 million jobs. That means you've covered the 1.8 million Ghanaians who are looking for jobs. Meanwhile, the young men and women are stranded out there looking for jobs. So it is time that our leaders become honest a bit to Ghanaians. They become truthful to us as Ghanaians and not keep on lying. So this comes to expose Dr. Mamou Baumian's assertion that they've created one, uh, 2.1 million jobs. And I think it is time that we, the youth, stand up and tell President Ekufado and the Vice President that enough is enough of the lies. They should stick to the reality so that they can come up with strategic policies that can address our unemployment situation. Okay, very well. Um, we're, we're going to be getting into the substantive, uh, substantive issues, but we're also going to be joined by lawyer Kwame Jan. Okay, I thought we had gotten into uh, it. He's a senior member of the CPP. <laughs> <laughs> this was my, oh, this my uh, Unfortunately, three minutes. Three minutes. unfortunately <laughs> we will not be able to uh, have uh, lawyer Jan joining us this morning. And uh, uh, we're, 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 we're going to continue. So, 
Let, let's begin with <laughs> let's begin with the issue of the majority in parliament. And yesterday, as you were, uh, you know, all aware of the speculations that was ongoing about the change in leadership and all of that, uh, which were, you know came out that uh, some members of the uh, caucus do not really agree with uh, changing the majority speaker uh, leader in parliament. Um, yesterday, unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, the man resigned. And he's been taken, uh, his position has been taken over by the very own uh, Honorable Afinio Makin, who is now the majority leader. And now, as of last night, there were some very serious consultations ongoing as far as uh, that situation was concerned. Now, it took even uh, the president, His Excellency Nanado Danko Kofwado, to come into the fray and all of that. And uh, we also saw the first deputy speaker also, you know, having press conferences, debunking the uh, change in leadership. And, uh, well, we're hoping that whatever it was speculated will not come to uh, fruition. But last night, the man resigned and uh, his position has been taken over now by Honorable Afinia Makin, like I said. So, uh, between now and the couple of uh, months that they will be in office, Afinia Makin has a lot to do. In fact, as of last night, he was engaged in so many activities. It means that certain things have to change. Now, those who were in the uh, chief whips and all of that have to be all promoted. Uh, because he's been uh, uh, taken off that position. So it means that uh, there's going to be that movement. Uh, those who are the first leader, uh, majority leader, uh, the, the chief whips and all of that will have to occupy those positions uh, in that order. But uh, the, there's going to be a, a, an official communication to that effect. And so as and when we're able to grab that official communications, we'll let you know. But right now, just like it happened with Haruna Idrisu uh, for the NDC, uh, where Dr. Forsen took over, the NPP have also made a decision that uh, a new face should come in and take over as the majority leader in parliament. And uh, this man, Osei Chemen Sabosu, has had a very sterling, you know, um, legacy when it comes to the uh, parliament uh, issues and all of that. He's, he's contributed a lot, over 24 years, uh, you know, doing this. And it makes a lot of sense that we give him that credit as a student. But let, let me find out from the NPP what they make of this. Uh, Dennis. Um, we, we saw this coming, but, uh, you know, there were schemes, there were issues, and all of that. How did we get here? Thank you for Following the NDC's lead? Oh, thank you very much, Kay. I, I think that uh, we started quite on a note where Peter um, starts as usual the rubble rousing, and then his, his greetings alone is a three-minute greeting. And uh, if you look at the kind of assertions... Well, he said that in connection to um, the, um, current economy and wicked... No, he, he actually brought that... So he, he created a connection for himself. It's not your fault. I mean, if you tell someone to greet and he tells you that he read some documents last night, he tells you uh, that uh, that is what he prepared that to come and tell. Of the, of the yes, so I, I think that it is very important. And I, for one, appreciate that young people like himself bring the conversation of unemployment up. Um, I hope that one day we get to a point where our unemployment drops to the likes of Japan and Co. Uh, but certainly not with someone who told Ghanaians that he's not a magician to give graduates employment. No, 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 no. It is quite unintelligent for anybody to suggest to us Ghanaians that even in the West of the West, our option of job creation and employment should be someone who, when we complained, that even his 800,000 figures of job creation is problematic. He told us, young people, young graduates, that you, Peter, and my lies are part of that. He is not a magician. And you see, that is the problem we have with young people when they decide that they will throw the future of this country away and rather jump on the political bad wagon. And that is what Peter has done this morning. Before Peter can even speak about issues of unemployment in this country, Peter ought to have the sense of uh, respect for the people of Ghana and then speak to the issue of John Dramani Mahama telling Ghanaians, young Ghanaians, that he is not a magician to create jobs for uh, graduates who have completed school. So it's not even a starter. He should have started on a good note. And especially when he brings him to see that uh, youth unemployment is around 1.8 million, and we said we've created a 2.1 million wow. job. And that uh, if it is that, so, then it means that we should have employed, everybody should have gotten a job. How unintelligent that could be. 
when you know very well that the population is growing, so as much as you do create more jobs, you still have a lot of people churning into the unemployment bracket. That is not to give any justification to unemployment. It is only to tell you that as much as government creates 2.1 million, government still has a responsibility to create more. Unlike the NDC, who told us that they are not magicians, they will not do anything about it. Unlike the NDC, who decided to place a ban and a freeze on employment. Unlike the NDC, who decided that for, when you go to the university and you become a graduate teacher, they will not employ you. Unlike the NDC, who said that even if you go to university and become a graduate nurse, they will not employ you. Unlike the NDC, who all, all and all and all, they handed over an immigration service of 2,600 to us and we moved it to 14,000. Look at the people who are coming to talk about unemployment in this country. When they told us that they had employed 1.6 million, and then Dr. Omane Buama comes out with a statement saying that it is rather 800,000. This is the people who are talking about unemployment. Okay. Credibility deficit here is so appalling that we cannot even have a conversation with them on that. They should be able to tell us how many jobs they created. We have said and proven with facts. And then let's, let me finish that and let's move on. Yes, we have proven with facts and data, and we've published it widely, that we have created 2.1 million in excess. As at the time, we were even publishing the data. And that is why, uh, if you tell me that 1.8 are still unemployed, so if our 2.1 should have absorbed them, it is extremely unintelligent. <laughs> and that is the problem we have. But I have said that we can't even have a conversation with the NBC when it comes to employment. When they told Ghanaians they are not magicians, when they placed a ban on uh, employment, when they could not employ graduate teachers, when they could not employ graduate nurses, this is not a group of people who want to have a conversation when it comes to employment. But let's, let's speak to the issues of um, uh, the changes in parliament. Mm. Uh, I think that that is a substantive topic that you uh, want us to look at at this point. First of all, Parliamentary changes in the history of this country have always um, been occasioned, mm. uh, whether by the caucus in parliament or by the party or by the government. It is an internal issue. And that is why when this matter came up, uh, it's even from the NDC side, myself and a lot more of people decided that it is their own business. Uh, the only unfortunate part is the way and manner the NDC handled the likes of Honorable Haruna Idrisu, the likes of Muntaka, People who had served the NDC. How, so how, were they, how were they handled? Oh, my brother. They were booted away. Up to date. Are we not seeing a similar situation? No, over no. There? If you've seen the... That we, we heard about schemings against... Uh, I'll get to that majority part. Majority leader. No. I'll get to that part. But the records are that. Honorable Haruna Idrisu was booted out of his seat as minority leader. And he is still better. And that is not how we treat a senior statesman. And that's man. different from how you did yours? I'm coming. I'll get to ours. That is not how you treat a senior statesman. A statesman who served the NDC. Just because some element in NDC believes he has political ambitions, they cannot cope with him. And this is an intelligent man who says that I am not going to leave my seat. Because if you want to change me, it must be a caucus decision. It must be, there must be mutuality and there must be some level of consensus building amongst us all as peers in parliament and in a party, a party that he's labored for, a party that you, Peter, hoped that one day you would have the opportunity of serving. But you did not even have the credibility. None of you had the credibility to talk about it and defend the likes of Honorable Muntaka. And to date, Honorable Muntaka is still better. If you like, put him on the phone. He would blast. When the difference here is that we have a leader of majority who has resigned. That's the difference. Who says that I am stepping away. I'm stepping down. As to what you heard on the scheming and what have you, what have you not, it, is, it, it, it has not come into the space. Because in the political space, when we have the NDC, expect that they will cook anything and bring it to the table. But what is the man saying? Yesterday, there was a meeting in, at the presidency yeah. where the president, as leader, who thinks about harmony, who thinks about the future of our party, met the parties involved. It was a closed-door meeting. And out of that meeting, the leader of the majority says that I have served my time. I'm resigning. I'm stepping down so that Honorable Afenyo Makins take the lead. I don't think there's even a conversation in this place. Okay, when you wake up tomorrow and you tell us that you, you are no longer going to work for the multimedia, you've resigned. How is that a problem? That's a personal choice. Unlike the situation it becomes where... a problem when the first deputy, the deputy speaker of parliament comes and organizes a press conference and, and, says, and he understands that they are setting 
scheming, his imagination is going on. But they, as far as they're concerned, as the caucus, they have not decided on making a change like that. And the person says, I resigned. What do you have to say? Mm -hmm. So that leads to the person's resignation. It means so, that it could also be that enough is enough. Uh, uh, so the question you ask yourself is that you and I, do we have the level of grit to question the likes of Honorable or say Chairman Sabos when he says he's resigned? This is not when he. Now people, people may resign and not resign in good faith. Uh, but yesterday you, you saw the you saw the meeting and the pictures. I saw the pictures. And guess Those what? Those pictures. Gu just guess pictures. what? Guess what? Okay. People take guess pictures. What? Guess what? Just to make sure that guess they what? Guess what? The part. The man who is with, the man who is who is not happy has just taken the job of a manifesto committee chair. You call him not happy. You think he's happy? They that should he's ask. They should put. You think that is happy that is No, they should just ask and put. That he's, he's put so honorable so Harun Idrisu as a manifesto committee chair. Who come back here to hear Luther? <laughs> that is the former Nooks president. So, Honorable Chairman Sam Bonsu, oh, you see the picture on your screen. Mm. As These pictures were as exclusive yesterday. As, as uh, beautiful uh, on, as on they can the be. PM Express, but let us not create something we, where we, there's we nothing. We also understand that these pictures could be a makeup. Because That's what I'm saying. That, that people who would want to appease a party or maybe the different factions and decide that I want to spar for the picture. People spar for the picture. Okay. It doesn't mean that they're happy about okay. it. It could still be bitter. I came here seeing you smile. Can I assume? That you are not happy. Based on the circumstances that you led see, to they're, my smiling, they're, they're, they assume that I'm happy or not. At the end of the day, what is the result? The result is what you have, and it benefits you. It benefits who? That's or what it is. But it may not benefit you. Or say Mr. Sabonso is not 18 years. Let's put some respect on the man's name. Mm. We've got to do that, at least for the, for the seniority, for the level of integrity this man has gathered over the period. This man says that, I have done my meetings. We have finished. And I, I think that the best way for me going forward and for the mm. party is to resign. If the NDC had given Honorable Haruna Ibisu a dogma of respect, a single iota of respect, they would have treated him with some decorum and some decency. Because they've not made him a chair? No, because they booted him out and he's bitter. He should prove to us that Honorable Haruna Ibisu is not bitter. Yeah, they should make him the manifesto committee chair. You see, the gone are the days when we fall into the, the, the conversation where the NDC creates lies, fabrication around issues. No, over here, the issues are bare. We are comparing two parties. Mm. One booted his mi minority leader. One had a decent conversation with the mi majority leader. And the majority leader says that, I want to do this rule now. I want to be the manifesto committee chair. So let me do that one. Let me leave parliament uh, my business to uh, Honorable Afenyo Marquez. Moreover, I mean, Honorable Afenyo Marquez is one of the, is the deputy majority leader now. Yeah. You see what the NDC did? It was a parliamentary coup. What the NDC did to Honorable Haruna Idrisu was a parliamentary coup. And young people had no, they, they had no modicum of, um, 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 conscience to criticize or come against that. But at, at the end of the day, that is not even the conversation here. The conversation here is that Kumasi Airport is, is, is about to go international, where, which you and I are extremely happy about. The conversation here is that when Kumasi Airport gets to the point we want it to get to, we would be proud of it as Ghanaians. And that is where we are taking Ghana to. That amidst all the challenges, amidst all the pandemic, amidst all the issues, this country is recovering at a rate that is admirable. This country is recovering at a rate that is something that is worth your attention and our attention. Mm. And that the question that begs for question action is that what would Ghana have become if pandemic or any pandemic of a sort had come during John Dramani Mohammed's administration? You and I would have been singing a different song. Ooh. Because even without Ooh. the pandemic, mm. you took this country to its knees. We'll look at the Kumasi airport. Maybe it will be our last conversation we we'll, would we'll all have before we go. I've seen the video, like I said, and I think I love it. And it is beautiful, but, actually. We're not going to politicize that. We'll all have our take on that when we are ending. Oh, no, I'm uh, not politicizing yeah. that. Peter. Uh, KMJ, let me say good morning to our viewers. And a special one to you see, play too good a special morning. mama, uh, Lady Reverend Vera Apiakran, for watching the show. We appreciate you, mommy, and thank you for watching us. Uh, good morning to you, mm. and then I'm now greeting, so you should understand. You greeted me earlier. Yeah. And so this morning I am scandalized as a youth. You see, this is what happened, and I was telling somebody last week that when we have young, energetic guys, young men, who have allowed themselves to be recruited into the Baulaya Academy, this is what they engage in. 
You see, when we are speaking, we are speaking with data and fact. And this morning, my brother engaged in what we call intellectual dishonesty. And it's a shame. You see, I am telling you that for 2023 annual household income and expenditure survey, 2023, the figure tells you that unemployment rate is 14.7%. And the figure is 1.8 million. Your own vice president, who is the leader of your party today, says at the same time, we, he's talking about population. We should talk, look at the population is growing. At that same time, the population you are talking is growing, they have factored those population growth in the analysis. But because you don't read and you don't research, you are not making that intellectual comparative analysis here. So I'm telling you that at that point, unemployment rate is 1.8 million. And you are saying that as at the end, this one is first, first three quarters. As at first quarter of 2023, you have created 2.1 million jobs. So every intellectual person out there will tell you that there is dishonesty in your, own, uh, in your employment uh, uh, or job creation figure that you are giving to Ghanaians. Because the statistics is telling you that 1.8 million Ghanaians. So if you are telling us you've created 2.1 million jobs, that means we should be able to cover the 1.8 million Ghanaians who are looking for jobs and they are not getting. Because this is within the space of just two or three months. So are you magician to create uh, two months? You create and cover this gap of uh, unemployment rate. You should credit Ghanaians with some level of intelligence. And it's shocking that you get a youth like this, speaking to figures like this. <laughs> President Muhammad job creation, the Ghanaians and the health professionals who are working at University of Ghana Medical Center, they are engaged in decent and sustainable jobs. Ghanaians who are working at Terminal 3, it is decent and sustainable job. Ghanaians who are working at Atwabo Gas, it's decent and sustainable jobs. The 54 polyclinics that we established is decent and sustainable job. 14 district hospitals that we established, decent and sustainable job. The 49 community day schools that we created, decent and sustainable jobs for the teachers and all other people who have been recruited there. We are talking about sustainable jobs. Last time I told you that when you check that their employment figure they are talking of, you go and see at the agriculture sector, People who are weeding farm, 750,000. Weeding farm, that is the job they have created. It's so disheartening. And you want us to celebrate you over this, this mediocrity? When you go down there, it is unit committee people who uh, uh, take credit for helping people to go and weed farm. A whole uh, chairman of economic management team, vice chairman, the leader of a party, touting himself that he has created, created job, what jobs people are weeding farms. Are you not ashamed? When we are talking about sustainable and decent job for the youth. And that is why I want to applaud President Mahama. Peter, the team youth, yeah, thank you. The team you youth of this country the, the, are the, happy the, 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 that President yeah. Mahama is talking about 24-hour economy. That custom office will be working 24 hours. Do you know what that means to the young Ghanaian out there? There are a lot of Ghanaians, the youth, who are yearning to work at the custom. So when custom office is running 24 hours, three shifts, if, as, if we assume that we are employing about 4,000 in the whole country, 4,000 people who are working at what you call a, a, a custom office across the country, and we are going to run three shifts, that means we are increasing to about 15,000 workers. So if 15,000 workers, a young Ghanaian, a young graduate, those who are going to finish their national service this year, and next year they will be hoping where to work, at least that young Ghanaian will have a hope that when custom office is running 24 hours, you will have a job. Okay. When Ghana let's, Revenue let's, Authority is running 24 hours, you will have a job. Issue. When Ghana Passport Office is running 24 hours, that young man has a hope that President Mahama, 24-hour economy, will create that sustainable and decent job for that person. And at least those who are dependent on such people will also be sorted out. This is what we are talking about. Not your Hula Balu people are willing farming. You, 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 you tout yourself about created a job. Please. Credit Ghanaians with some level of intelligence. And when you are making analysis and you talk about uh, uh, unintelligence, you are engaging in intellectual dishonesty. 
and speak to the facts and the data so at least the youth out there can appreciate that, yes, we have some youth who are speaking for them. You okay. are massaging the figures and there's no speaking well for the youth of this country. Please, okay, let's, let's get engaging The two that. of you are also and engaging then, in yes. um, uh, 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 bad examination <laughs> practices. You, you don't know how to answer examination yes, questions. Yes, I, I am coming there. He asked you one question. <laughs> <laughs> you greet him and he <laughs> starts with three You greet him and he does a three minutes unemployment analysis. Speak to when when, 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 when you are trying to make and I always say that when you're speaking, speak to facts. And that's the problem with the MPP. They don't speak to facts. They don't speak to reality. What the NDC did is different because over the years, the norm has been that it is the leadership of the party, including majority, uh, the, the uh, caucus in parliament, mm. that work on changing leadership. It is just recently that the other paper, uh, 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 standing orders of, of parliament, has been changed to ensure that it is the caucus members that elect the leadership of either of the uh, groups in parliament. So in one way or the other, what NDC did in changing their leadership was not out of place. Let's set the record straight. Since the inception of the Fourth Republic, this is the first time we are witnessing a leader of a caucus resigning. And that is a fact. For the, since the inception of the Fourth Republic, this is the first time a leader of a caucus in parliament is resigning. And why? What led to the resignation? And that is very important. You can tickle yourself and laugh. The reality will catch up with you. To take the deputy speaker of parliament, who is a member of the majority caucus, to call for a press conference and say that we have no clue about this, this is not coming from us, Nobody should accept the powers of the leaders of uh, 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 the caucus in parliament in that we have new standing orders and it shows clearly, it paved the way and shows the way we should elect our leaders in parliament and therefore such social media publication should not be uh, uh, acknowledged. Take the deputy speaker of parliament to do this. That should tell you that there's something fundamentally wrong with the whole process. And in the next day, we woke up to hear that the leader of the majority caucus has resigned. That is shocking. It's a cause for worry. You can deceive yourself that you have uh, given him a campaign manifesto. When they, when they brought out the list of the various uh, groups, members who are going to leave the manifesto draft and what have you, what's his name there? Is it too late to make <laughs> DMG, I'm just of asking it. you. I'm asking it. And if, this if are the, the this are the critical question people will be asking out there. You have brought out the list of people who are going to lead your man campaign and then your manifesto. You've brought out the list already. His name wasn't part. The next day we hear that you are doing a rumble star reshuffle in parliament. Even amidst the new standing orders. And people are grieved. And when people are grieved, the next moment, uh, the person resigns, and you come and tell us that uh, we are giving him chairperson of the manifesto committee. You are tickling yourself, you are laughing, you are dancing to your own tune. The reality has catch up with them. The man was angry. The man has been pushed to resign, and that is the fact. And that's the reality. The man has been pushed to resign. And I'm telling you that for the first time in, under the Fourth Republic, we are having a leader of a caucus in parliament resigning, not being changed per the rules and regulation in parliament. Resigning. That's a cause for worry. So for the MPP, they can engage in all these uh, uh, analysis. But uh, like I said, the other caucus members in parliament who are from the majority side know the reality. And that is why the deputy speaker came out to have a press. We're, 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 we're yet to hear Joseph Ousu, Honorable Joseph Ousu speak, you know, with regards to what has happened, because he was championing uh -huh. that, you know, he's the that, first deputy speaker. That is why I am saying that, that so. this man has been him. forced to just resign and then being compensated with an afterthought of manifesto com uh, uh, drafting committee chairperson. That is all. He's <laughs> just being compensated with an afterthought. When they realize that no, we are ambushing the man too much, so let's try and find a way. Because if we do not compensate him, there will be chaos. So let's find a way. And then he has been pushed to resign. Because actually, because uh, 
uh, I think Andy, Honorable Andy, Api and Kubi. Kubi, yeah. Yes. Recently, I think on this weekend, yeah, we, stated we that had an yet at, 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 at the AFEC or NEC meeting, it was part of the agenda. It was part of the agenda to reshuffle leadership in parliament. But they didn't go into the meat of the whole issue because they realized that they were mixed feeling at the meeting. And therefore, they have to quickly push it and, and then try and use the social media agenda, put it through the social media. Let's see the reaction. And when they realized that the reaction wasn't good, it was a bad taste, and the members of parliament are resisting that attempt, the Rambo style, then they have to force the man to come out and resign. And I'm telling you that it is for the first time we are witnessing this under our democratic dispensation. And it should call for cause to worry. If you are a young man, and you are watching and you aspire to be in parliament, you ask yourself, at what point was someone who in one way or the other, that's one of the astute members of parliament that we have. Honorable Chase means Abuzi is one of the, you know, uh, uh, institutional memories that we have in parliament. At least he has like nine months or ten months to move out of office. One would have thought that, oh, at least let's give him this few months left for him. But, but it, it wasn't unnecessary, so looking at the fact that the... NDC made it the same yes. change, you know, so that new people will take over. Yeah, yeah. Is it so, the same so, way? So I, the, I was the, telling the, you that so for that, NDC... That we also need, yes, need that, 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 that Exactly. For NDC, as a, like I said, we had a, a way of electing leaders to parliament. But and, it's, and, it's and not the it was not out of place. As long as they know that whoever that is replacing... What led, what led to the, the resignation of minority leader in parliament is what matters. Like I said, I am telling you that the processes leading to the change in leadership of the minority caucus was not out of place. That has been the norm over the years. I hope you understand. But this one, we have a majority caucus leader resigning. And the issues leading to the resignation is what we are talking of. So in one way or the other, the party didn't follow the normal processes and the due processes that needed to be done before uh, uh, coming out with that social media ambush. And then later, he comes out to say, I have resigned. So you cannot liken this to that of the NDC. <laughs> you cannot liken this to that of the NDC. And for me, uh, mm -hmm. moving on in our democracy, these are some of the things we should be looking at. Even both caucus in parliament. And I'm so happy that the new standing orders clearly give that power a mandate, though at all points, there will be some consultation to uh, at the party level, but it gives the power to the caucus members in parliament mm. to elect their okay. leadership in parliament. And that is that for me is one of the good steps that moving forward, it will deepen our, uh, our democratic credentials, especially as far as our parliamentary proceedings are concerned. So for me, I'm so happy with the new uh, uh, standing order. Okay. That All right, uh, Dennis, that we need okay. to is, 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 um, I, I feel you're marking ready for this. Okay, there is a problem. Uh, let me draw your attention to the problem. He mentions that this is the first time a majority leader is being removed. Resign. Resigning. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we will do two things. Whether it is the party that removes or it is the caucus that removes or chooses. When the person resigns, every, else, every other thing becomes null and void. First fundamental established. Second fundamental, it is on record that 70 NDC MPs protested the removal of Haruna Idrisu. Third fact. He says here that it is the party and the caucus that agrees to do it. That is perfectly understood. Mm. But in this situation of the NDC, it was just the party that did it. If that is not a coup d'etat, what is it? Let me tell you another fact. Whether it is resigning, removal, caucus, or party, this is the first time in Ghana's fourth republic that a minority leader has been taken off. G.H. Men uh, Mensah was minority leader from 1993 to 2001. The next minority leader was never removed. The next minority leader was never removed. But for the first time, the NDC rambled out and removed, uh, 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 what do you call it? <laughs> Haruna Idrisu. <laughs> and he comes here to, to question someone who is resigned. Are you serious? Let me give you the data. 93 to 2001, the late G.H. Mensah under Jerry John Rawlings was never removed. 93 to 2001. You are sitting there. 2001 to 2009, Honorable Agban Sumani Babin was never removed. 
from 2009 to 2017, Honorable Osei Chairman Sabosu was never removed or never resigned. When you come here, be ready for the conversation as it is. Ooh. Let's not even go there. And then he comes to make some assertions. You see, okay. Yeah. They, 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 hold on, no, hold on, no, hold on, no, hold on, you. hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me take this one off. I beg. Let me. I beg you. Then. I beg you. I beg you in the name of God. He says that the data or the records we provided for the 2.1 million employed was for the first quarter. That is not only unintelligent. It is dishonest. It is false. Which one is that? I'll give you the data. It, we said from 2017 <laughs> to 2022, <laughs> we had created 2.1 million jobs. <laughs> And he says that the census says 1.8 million has been created. So automatically, it should be yeah, 1.8 yeah, yeah. million are unemployed. So automatically, that 2.1 million should absorb the 1.8. And I'm telling you that it is unintelligent. You have not done a deep thinking. If you think that the data is for just for the first quarter, population has grown. So if you create 2.1 million, it does not automatically mean that all the 1.8 million. Of, of the, this, of, is, this is too, okay, so, uh, this is let, too let, basic. Uh, let me, I let me, just can't let me, understand let me, let me why it is difficult for Peter to, to understand. Come back to you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my uh, parliamentary co uh, correspondent, Koko Asante, is at Parliament. Let me find out what is going on there. Uh, Koko, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, KMJ. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, KMJ. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can also hear you now. Um, what, what, what are we picking from Parliament this morning? Well, sitting hasn't quite started yet. We expect that MPs will now come in. Of course, it's very early. And around 9, 10 a.m., more people will be coming in. But what we expect that is going to happen is that the New Patriotic Party is officially going to communicate to the Speaker of Parliament and the entirety of Parliament about this change in its leadership, that Osei Chairman Sabunsu resignation. Yesterday night, there was a crucial meeting at the Jubilee House. The President, Osei Chairman Sabunsu himself, almost all members of parliament, as well as party leadership, meeting to resolve what was becoming a, a, a knuckle in the new patriotic party. They had to deal with this as soon as possible before it degenerated into something else. And this had been coming. Of course, things have happened quite fast, but there had been talks in the last few days about a potential shakeup in the majority leadership. And what exactly, what form was this shakeup going to take? We, we didn't quite know. But as we've come to know now, this shakeup, as we, we, we were told about, was simply a removal of a state chairman Sabunsu. Um, the point had to be made that, of course, the political, the, the, the new patriotic party had been making some changes to its to its caucus in parliament, and given the reshuffle that the president did, we expected that a state chairman Sabunsu was going to be appointed as minister for foreign affairs. In fact, that was the general expectation, and that if he was appointed foreign affairs minister, then his, lead, his deputies will now step up one role each in, in, in there. The president's reshuffle came, Osei Chairman Sabunsu, had not been made the, 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 the foreign affairs minister, as was widely speculated. So the expectation, therefore, was that he was going to continue and see away the last eight months of his tenure as majority leader. Mind you, Osei Chairman Sabunsu will not be returning to parliament in 2025 because at the end of his tenure, his 24 years in parliament, he is set to retire and go and get some rest, and, and, and he did not run in the NPP primaries. So when this news started trickling in, Monday became quite a hot potato when the NPP's National Executive Co Council, National Executive Committee, as well as Council, were meeting on a number of issues, Dr. Balmier's campaign team and other things. But on the agenda was a potential shakeup of NPP leadership. And it was widely rumored in the news media that Osei Chairman Sabos was expected to be changed Alexander Federal Martin will be appointed as the majority leader. But just on Tuesday, some MPP MPs clearly not happy with that, organized a news conference warning that they are not going to allow anything of that sort. They believe Osei Chairman Sabonso must stay. Mm. But things were happening quite fast. On Tuesday, I spoke to Osei Chairman Sabonso himself. I did an interview with him. And I spoke to him about this so-called plot to remove him from office. He says that those persons who are doing so could continue and do whatever they want. That was all he said to me. Yeah. And then he left. And then on Wednesday, there was a lot of news still in Parliament about potential removal. He came in just about an hour while sitting was going on. He did not stay for so long, and then he left. And then there was this meeting at Jubilee House. But at that time, it had become quite known that some people in the party and within Parliament wanted Osei Chairman Sabosu to exit. They wanted him out. And so Osei Chairman Sabosu sensing that he was definitely going to be taken out, he decided that he was going to 
resign himself. And so, of course, the information we are picking from our sources who are in this meeting and our sources within the political party is that the political party really had its decision made and they thought that they wanted to bring new faces to to actually bolster the party's chances in parliament to be able to do key business. And uh, Alexander Fenyamakin had been the one he had penciled to become the majority leader. He's currently the deputy majority leader. Mm. And so the party decision was made and yesterday's meeting was for the president to try and convince the caucus not to not to make this a big issue like the NDC's issue became. And it was at this meeting that Osei Chairman Sabonso knew that this was what was coming. And as was to say, he decided that he would, was going to take the jump. Already we've been hearing from people like the Dr. Rashid Rahman of Africa Centre for Parliamentary Affairs who believe that Osei Chairman Sabonso was forced out. But mm. the information on record is that Osei Chairman Sabonso stepped down, resigned willingly, but of course, people are reading me into all the things that have been happening in the past week. So, Kwaku, that, that meeting at the Jubilee House changed everything. Yes. In fact, the expectation was that the president was going to convince him. Going into that meeting, one thing was clear that Osei Chairman Sabos was not coming out as majority leader. But in what sense? Because on Wednesday, you could sense the tension in parliament. In fact, there were so many MPs who joined the first deputy speaker, Joseph Oseusu, to organize that press conference yeah. on Tuesday, announcing that they were not going to countenance any change. Some of them had started changing positions. Some of them were calling me to say, we want to organize a new interview. We want to back Afenio Makin to be the new majority leader. So the tension was palpable in parliament on Wednesday, and a party had to step in to resolve that. Who better to do that than the president? So the president called them into a meeting. And I should tell you that a number of key Osei Chambers about the loyalists, persons who believe that Osei Chambers about should not be changed, did not go into the meeting because they did not believe that there was any treating going to the meeting where the party's mind had already been made up. So we can confirm that Joseph was saying to the first deputy speaker who had done a news conference warning that a change will not be allowed, did not go into that meeting, and the appear could be also a staunch supporter of Osei Chairman Sabos, did not go into the meeting. A number of persons aligned to Osei Chairman Sabos were not in that meeting. And that meeting was sort of to try and make it clear to Osei Chairman Sabos so that this is what the party had decided. We need to find a way around it to make this as calm as possible. And so it was such a key game changer the expectation was that the president who convinced him to allow this change, convince the hardliners, persons who are taking a tough stance yeah. to tone down a little bit. But even before the president will get him to do what was a very difficult job, his job was made easier when Osei Chairman Sabos decided on his own that he was yeah, going he to resign. resign. So that was a crucial meeting. MPs getting out of that, knowing that this could be a make or break for a party willing to, or seeking to break the eight in this election. Rancor in parliament is the last thing they want. And I said Chamberlain supposed to make the job easier by deciding that he himself will go. Mm. From all indications, uh, we're made to believe that all is not well. I mean, uh, depending on which of, uh, part of the divide you belong to. But let's look at the shakeup mm. and its implications. So it means that if uh, Afiyama can move a step forward, what happens to the other ones that are behind, the chief whips and all that? What are their positions also going to be looking like? Well, all of them are also getting a raise. They are getting their, their positions changed. Oh, so it's so a promotion for as all? Of now, yes. In fact, a lot of things are going to change in the majority leadership now. Afeno Markin is expected to be confirmed this morning in parliament as the new majority leader. Mm. That would mean that the deputy will become, will become vacant. Yeah. We expect that Frank Kanodompre, MP for Nsawa Madwejuri, who is currently the majority chief whip, will be promoted from, deputy, from chief whip to the deputy majority leadership position. And then the, the, the chief whip position will now be taken by Habib Idrisu. Habib Idrisu is currently the, the second deputy whip. And so he will also get a, a step up and will become the, de, the, the chief whip. Then there will be the two whips left. Lydia Hassan ordinarily would have gone on to become the majority chief whip. But the president, Richard Ford, named him, named her, I should say, yeah, the, as the, minister, minister for sanitation and water resources. So she's, go, she's going out of the majority leadership as we speak. And so we expect that Patricia Pijin, she is the member of parliament for Asokwa in the Ashanti region. She will now become the first deputy majority whip. And then Alex Tete, MP for Sefia Kontombra, will now become the second deputy. So that will be the makeup of the majority leadership. And other thing they have to grapple with is where do you let Osei Chairman Sabon to sit? Because there's currently no seat at the front. The only two seats that you could give to Osei Chairman Sabon, so who has been such a permanent fixture in leadership since 2005. It's always been there. And so the expectation is that you give me a front seat. But there are not seats available in the front. There are, the other two that are not for the leaders are for the deputy speakers in the MPP majority side. So it clearly means that if this change is effected officially this morning when the communication comes to the speaker, 
that changes in terms of certain arrangement will have to also be done. The office arrangement has to be sorted out because uh, the leaders have bigger offices. Some of them have to be moving out for their replacement to, to occupy that. So in the next few weeks, a lot of logistics have to be deployed, but mm. that will be the shakeup. Almost all the deputies, the persons following the search chairman are going to get some raises. And then Alex Tete and the MP for Asoka, Patricia PJ, who joined the new leadership. 2024 elections is very crucial. Uh, there have been changes in majority leaders in parliament. What do you foresee happen in the coming weeks in terms of the role these two men, you know, bring to the House of Parliament and what they're able to do for their party as well, both Afio Makin and, of course, uh, our very own Dr. Forsen? Well, so for, for, for now, the crucial aspect is that the new patriotic party and other persons in the, in the government need to make sure that this issue is sorted that it does not degenerate into something else. Because mm. if it does, the governing side are going to struggle with getting bills and other business through parliament. You need all of them on the floor at every point in time to be able to do certain things. And there are persons, of course, who are not satisfied with all the things that have happened. They are not satisfied with how this leadership change has been brought about. And so it is going to be difficult getting them to come to parliament, to come and do business with the government. So the party and the government, We'll be trying to paper over these cracks immediately so that in the coming days that can happen. And for the first time in this fourth republic, both the majority leader and the minority leader are from the same region. They are all from the central region. Dr. Tofosin is MP for uh, um, uh, one of, oh, it just came me, and then Nafenya Makin is the MP for Futu around Winneba. So these two men from the central region, and they are going to lead each side. They are all young men in terms of the vibrancy with which they debate on the floor of the house. And so, uh, these two men are trying to, in the last eight months, there are going to be a number of key business that are going to come. There may be taxes, or say Chairman Sabunso, have been such a strong leader getting the government all that he had wanted in the last few years. All the taxes they wanted, a levy, emissions levy. Even when the going got tough in parliament, or say Chairman Sabunso, made sure that they were passed, including having to put MPs who were sick in ambulances to come to the floor to be able to vote. So that was crucial. Say Chairman Sabunso has been able to deliver. The only all the expectation is now that also, uh, uh, his, his successor, Alexander Fenyo Market, should be able to do the same, should be able to rally the base of the new patriotic party to come together to do their job. That would be tough because, of course, there are people who are grappling, there are people who are murmuring, who are not happy with the changes. But this is a political party. They have ways of bringing their people around so that some of this rancor that we've seen in the past few weeks, of course, may last another week, but eventually the new patriotic party should be able to place a lid on that. Great. Many thanks to you this morning for making time with us here on the show. We appreciate you, bro. Thank Great. you, And that's uh, Koku Asante, our parliamentary correspondent, joining us this morning here, bringing us some update on what exactly is happening in parliament with respect to the issue of uh, Asechi Mensa Bonsu resigning as the majority leader in parliament and taken over by Honorable Afinio Makin, who's also an MP uh, in uh, Winneba. Now, um, Dr. Forsen is also an MP in uh, Jumaku Eshim. And uh, so we now have two majority leaders who are both MPs, you know, and fresh blood, if you want to put it in that way, taking over uh, the business of parliament. Uh, we'll move on. We'll talk about some of the messages that I've, have, uh, I've received. I'll try and see how best we can uh, get uh, some of the messages that we've received this morning. I'll be reading some of them from here. And, uh, okay, so let me, let me try and see if I can... Uh, Get it over here so we can read a few of them. You can also continue to send your messages to us. Let us know what you think about the conversation we're having this morning. We seem to be having a bit of issue with uh, the... Uh, okay, let me, let me try and read some from here. Let me try and read some of the messages from here. So this one over here says, it's coming from Aaron. Uh, Baba Kukukomi said, it says, good morning to you. Some say uh, it's, it's a fallacy that the military will not be involved uh, in the 2024 general election, but I think it's not about the military involvement of the, or the police engagement during the general election. It should be citizens' protection, uh, citizens given enough freedom to exercise their franchise without any form of intimidation, and the center of focus should be on citizens' security uh, uh, secureness. That's uh, love, respect, sending in that one, Aaron, uh, sent in that one. Uh, this one over here is coming from Philip L. Philip was saying, he says, Dennis is on top of issues. Trust me, he knows his stuff. That's also uh, some of the message you've sent over there. Let me try and see what I can have. Um, this one says, Hamza Mohammed says that, uh, 
Alaji Hamza Pekham, good morning, my brother. Truth be uh, told, I pity the NPP guy in your studio. I would advise him to research, read well, and get prepared before coming to your program. We have been told by the GSS that the unemployment rate in the country is on the rise. Uh, so what is he talking about? The guy always feels he knows it all. Meanwhile, they know not. As we speak today, where are the NAPCO beneficiaries? Is it not a shame for those young guys uh, uh, to work for the nation for nine months without a penny? Kim, as a journalist, you have the figures before you, and I wonder why you cannot read it to the public because it's your responsibility. Peter already did that several times. I don't know why I'm supposed to repeat that to you again. Uh, to educate and inform the public, this NDP guys have no shame. They should, uh, they should, what, act, stop this act of insulting, you mean, or intelligence and credit as well, the respect we deserve in this country. The future of this country and uh, this wicked, super incompetent government is pregnant and hopeless. Uh, I'm just sent in that one. Let me go and see if I have more that I can read. Okay, I can't seem to have that over there, but let me see if I can get some of the messages over here so I can read them. But you can also continue to send yours. We're also going to get some messages from WhatsApp. Let me see if I can get some messages from WhatsApp as well. Justice Opong, uh, Manu says, uh, from Sir Peace Mancraso, NDC never again. Um, let me see if I can get some more. I have my data, sir. You have your... <laughs> let me have my <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> All right, let me, let me... Okay, so this one says, uh, please, this is Selassie from Tetegu. Okay. Kindly tell Dennis it was an IMF conditionality to freeze <laughs> un, uh, employment <laughs> and wasn't an NDC <laughs> approach to unemployment, just like the NPP had been under the IMF conditionality to increase electricity bills every three months. Uh, he should fact check his points before saying anything on air. Uh, uh, Baumia is pardoned for perhaps forgetting to touch on LGBTQ plus in his 72-point vision. He is, however, reminded to let us know his stand on this issue. Uh, his loud silence is not only highly worrying, but suspicious. Nana Kakari in Tachiman sent in that one. Good morning to you. Our society forbids certain cultures like the LGBT bill, which defiled our norms and moral values, which I think a parliament should not even give around uh, to be discussed, uh, give ground to be discussed. We must respect our values as Africans and uphold our Christian doctrine to prevent us from indulging in certain weird foreign practices. Uh, and Aaron sent in that one. Good morning, who's campaigning for Baumia is like selling rotten tomatoes. You go shut, Taya, nobody go buy them. This bad mate can lie as if there is no God. He's ungrateful to even his own driver. He does not respect Ghanaians, only desperate for power. No try me again, Bia, this time. Experience is the best teacher. Vo JDM for jobs and development. Kings from Techiman. I want to know why NDC is now showing 2016 Ayalolo adverts. NDC, never again. Um, hello, trained teachers are in the house after successfully completing their service and passing their lung seizure exams. Uh, we're told that the finance minister hasn't opened uh, the portal yet. They're supposed to open that before they can make their appointment and then get uh, subsequently be posted to those places. So we're hoping that uh, that happens. Alassane Sese from Zenu Central says, why is it that the NPP have to let uh, Chairman Sabon to resign before they confirm his running mate's nomination to partner Baumia? Uh, the resignation of Chairman Sabonso is just a political uh, gymnastic. Uh, the NPP are playing with Ghanaians. The man is the running mate to Baumia. Uh, we, don't, we don't have any idea of that right now. Uh, all we know is that he's been appointed manifesto chair. And so as to whether he's going to be Baumia's running mate, that we're yet to uh, confirm that we don't know anything about that. Good morning. Please tell the NPP man that NAMCO trainees still owe nine months without any information from them. They should pay our money for us. NPP, all of, uh, all of you throwing dust into, uh, to deceive Ghanaians. We will not continue with this hardship and allow NPP to continue. They should pay our money before ending of March. <laughs> So why Dr. Baumia didn't digitalize a Japa to save his hoping lost that could have been uh, saved and transformed a lot of lives? Simon in uh, Bunkrugu. Normally you are the yo-yo. I don't know if this is the yo-yo. <laughs> now tell the NPP man to stop. His name is Dennis, please. To stop shouting, Ghanaians are not those of 2016. Wise now. Uh, do I have any more? 
if I, okay, good morning. Please, some of the customers of the collapsed banks have still not received our hard-earned money deposited at the bank. They started paying during the 2020 election but stopped the payment immediately after the election on the 7th of December 2020. We, the customers of GN Bank at Toma East, have not been paid at all. Please remind DMB that we need our money before the 2024 elections. I'm sure Dennis is taking notes on that as well. Um, good morning to everyone. Unemployment in Ghana is a it's a problem. Uh, no, it's, unemployment in Ghana is problematic. Uh, the Minister of Unemployment and Labour told us the system is choked and Ghanaians cannot be employed. Yet behind uh, seeing the government is employing youth with 10,000 cities, all this uh, will stop if we vote them out of power. Yesterday, the NPP majority leader stepped down and there will be cracks in the NPP in the coming days. Abuchi Flip from Keta sent in that one. Uh, do well to leave the curses and all of those things out when you're sending us the messages, please. Good morning, Joy Prime. I'm finding it difficult, very difficult to comprehend what the NPP rep is trying to put across. So why is he di digressing from the question put before him? The NPP has succeeded by ousting the majority leader out of his position. He is there play, uh, blabbing about NDC. As for unemployment under this government, is more than wahala. Uh, good morning, KMG. My heart bleeds when I see young guys defending these corrupt government and they see nothing wrong with what is going on in this country. Uh, you didn't add your name to us. Do, do, do well to add your name to it when you send us the messages. So these, these are messages on Facebook, I guess. We're going to be looking at WhatsApp. Okay, so these are messages on WhatsApp. You can continue to send your messages there for us. We'll take a look at them. And... Uh, Okay, so the very last one, I think. Uh, hello, good morning, KMJ. I don't know what is wrong with Ghana. We, that uh, we don't have money. There are, they, they are using the resources money to change new mass, uh, meters. I am asking that, I'm asking what fault is it with the old meters? Broke country, we are always borrowing. I feel pity and sad. KMJ, I wish to have your contact. Desmond, CEO, uh, Shankana Football Agency in Mamprobi. Uh, this one, I'll try and see how this I can uh, link up with you after the show. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so, so, so we'll be doubling into uh, the LGBT uh, conversation that's shortly, oh. but you finish up. Yes, so, well, for me, this whole uh, change in leadership in parliament by the MPP, like as I, as I said earlier, it was just an ambush, it was just a uh, you know, strategy to just uh, take him off. And then when they realized that there were some agitation, they have to force him, to, for him to resign and then compensate him with a package that possibly, uh, just to suit him a little. But when you were, when you engaged your reporter, in fact, he, he made a critical point that when they had a crucial meeting of which Jim Ezabunz was there, mm. some of the key members of parliament who were aggrieved uh, by the attempt to, uh, change the leadership of which they were expected to be there were not in the meeting. So mm -hmm. that, that should also, uh, uh, you know, uh, lead to another form of analysis that why, so why were they not at the meeting? If they have consented to the decision by the leadership of the party and that of the president, so why were they not in that meeting? So we leave that to them as their own internal issue. Let them deal with it. But you see, you listen and uh, 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 when you were reading the messages, you see how Ghanaians are concerned about the current unemployment issue in the country. And I want to urge my brother, you see, if you go and revise your data analysis proper and know more about data analysis so that when you're making argument and submission to a, a, a data relating to our unemployment issues in the country, you will not be engaging in what you call unintelligent analysis and our viewers out there knows the truth uh kmj let me make this facts once again that one when point, you check one point point the lead uh, uh, automatically you, know, and our viewers are, you see you don't understand that is my problem with you and you don't want to listen when you check Tell 2016 us, yeah, listen. Listen, listen to me mm -hmm. 2016 data from the same ghana saska service mm -hmm. indicated that unemployment figure was 1.27 million take note of this write them the unemployment rate as of 2016 was 8.4%. In 2021, the same Ghana Saska service did another survey, and unemployment figure was 1.55 million. The rate was 13.9. In 2023, 
They are telling you the unemployment figure is 1.8 and the rate is 14.7. It's and about 1.3 million. Yes. Now. And now, a, uh, 40 so, so this is the analysis it's I want down to get to, so that he can go and learn. It's going down 1. to... 3. It's going up to 1.3 1. 3 million now. Yes. So now, this is the analysis I want him to go and well, learn. 1.8 so is false. He, no, it's 1.2. He mentioned 1.2. So 1.8 was uh, 2016. And today, this is, I have it here. And today, so, so, so it's 1.8. Uh, the current 1. figure 8. is 1.8. It's supposed to be 1.3 million. No, so the current <laughs> figure is 1.8. I will show it to you. So it, and then it moves from 14 uh, 14%. 14%. Percent. So no, uh, from 13.9 to 14.7 now. 7%. That's for, for the indication so, that And this one, one is point, a trend analysis from 2017 till date. And they are making the point that from the same 2017 till the same year 2023, they have created 2.1 million jobs. Take note here. The current data is telling you that unemployment rate has moved from 8.4 to 14.7. From 1.2 to 1.8. And you are what telling I have us. is 1.3. Okay, no so problem. I, we'll yes, have fantastic. So, yeah, yeah. But even, this was like two hours even, ago. Even let's take, let's, let's even ago. take the 1.3. <laughs> that is not <laughs> even dangerous. <laughs> let's even take the 1.3. And I will show, I mean, I have it here. I even did, I have the whole document, the current mm. document here. And I even did screenshot. So, so that, that's the 14.7. So, so let me even okay, take the 1.3 no, no. million. No, no, we are making inform analysis. Let me even take your 1.3. That is even dangerous. So 1.3 million gap of unemployment. And you are telling us that you've created 2.1 million jobs. So why has our unemployment rate shot from 8.4 to 14.7? This is the analysis every analyst will be making. If you are claiming that you've created 2.1 million jobs, what and then uh, you okay, created 2.1 million jobs. I need to respond to them. These and then these are, at the same time, you need to let them our finish. unemployment yeah. rates have jumped from 8.4 to 14.7. So where are the 2.1 million jobs? Are they ghost employment? Are they ghost jobs? Are they for people who we don't know in the country? Because if you have created 2.1 million jobs, it should reflect in the analysis. It should reflect in the data. It should reflect in why our, job, uh, our, our unemployment rate should not jump to 14.7. Because the same period, it is the same period of analysis. So you are talking about, oh, I said uh, 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 first quarter. The reporting period is the first, the first quarter of 2023. That's what you went. And when I say reporting period, in analysis, data analysis, reporting period starts from somewhere to somewhere. So where you are reporting the data from, that is what I reference. If you don't know, if you don't understand, go and check. So it is from 2017 to 2023, the quarters. And the same data from Ghana Statistics is also referencing the same thing. So if the Ghana Statistical Service data is showing that our unemployment rate is 14.7, Meanwhile, you are uh, claiming that you've created 2.1 million jobs. That means we should clear all the areas of unemployment in the country. Because the data we use for <laughs> unemployment is statistical. And we are talking about decent and sustainable jobs here. So if you have created 2.1 million jobs, clearly it should reflect in our data. Okay, but it is not reflecting. Uh, okay, right. And every data right, analyst out there will be questioning okay. you where from that 2.1 million jobs. Before we can continue. Okay, uh, before we can continue. Before we can continue. Intelligent analysis. Before we can continue. Uh, before we can continue. <laughs> to explain your data and to make your data simple, you don't need to scream. <laughs> you don't need to giggle. It's simple. Peter, uh, Peter, let's take your time and let's learn. All we are saying is, these are these these giggling's are not helpful. First of all, first of all, if you want to really credit Ghanaians that you want us to know that you're a data analyst, that's all you've been trying to let us know. No problem. You failed to even just oppose your analysis with the population. So, first of all, Peter tells us that 1.3 million or 1.8 million were unemployed. So if you say you've created 2.1 million jobs, it should cover it. That's all he's been telling us today. It is very, very basic. It's so basic that even my grandmother will understand that once people are growing, people are be their population is growing, you, have still, you still have people being unemployed. This is very basic. So please, Peter, respect yourself. Let me talk. When you were talking, I was oh, quiet. Peter, allow him, allow him. The time you were reporting to 1.8 or 1.5, what was the population? The time you were reporting 2.1 million jobs, 
what was the population. It can never be said that because you had 1.8 million people unemployed and today you've employed 2.1 million. Oh. Peter, alarm, alarm, Peter, Peter, no, Peter, alarm. Peter, was, Peter, was, Peter, was, Peter, no. take this, no. take, Peter, take this alarm. from me. Go, go, if you go, go, go for go, your go, community, go, go, I'm talking, go, go, okay, I'm go, talking. Go, I stop those things. I'm telling you that it's the same period of accounting. The 2020 so let him finish. Let him finish. You already stated this in your submission earlier. So you should get the facts there. Let him finish. Let him finish. get the facts there. Go ahead. Go ahead, my brother. The only way you get to interrupt me is when you are, you are not talking, what you are saying is false. You keep quiet, I talk when you finish, you get your day. Simple. That is the respect I have for you and our viewers. Don't do that. When you meet me on your show, keep quiet. It's simple as that. Please go on. I'm saying that once the population has changed, we cannot say that because we had 2.1 million, it will automatically absorb everybody. Because yesterday, just yesterday, someone graduated. Just yesterday, someone joined the unemployment bracket. Just yesterday, someone moved from being employed and lost their job. So your unemployment figure will still be existent. Though you create a job, but you, once you are churning out more people, you will still have unemployed people. This is basic. This is not... But others, 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 so... Uh, this is not rocket science. Yeah, but the government knows that, right? Uh -huh. The government is yes. aware that people lose jobs. That is why, yes, just yesterday, the financial clearance was given. I'm giving. coming, I'm Dennis, I'm coming. I understand where you're coming from. I'm saying Simple. That, I'm saying that the government knows that people lose jobs every day. Yes. The government knows that people graduate every day. Yes. So what do you do to make sure that that aspect of the change Thank you. is taken care of? So first of all, we've been able to address the fact that it is not any data analysis, rocket science, talk plenty talk, no, they buy horse to explain to people that when you have unemployment and tomorrow you create a job, it does not mean that it will automatically, all unemployed people will vanish. Because just yesterday now, nah, another person graduated. This is very simple. My mother will understand. Your grandmother will understand. You can, you can conjure all figures, it doesn't matter. Simple. Now let's come to the issue of unemployment in itself. I am saying that the Nanadu Dankwa Baumia led administration believes that unemployment is a problem. And so we are saying that it is a continuous process. We have created 2.1, as at the time we were reporting those figures. But it is not exhaustive. And so, yeah, we still have people. And so every single day, we take efforts to employ more people. Now, what the Ghanaian people have on their table is that we are not in heaven yet, but they have NDC and MPP. He should, in all his lectures, tell us how many jobs they created and give us data to it. We have submitted our data. We have said that we created 2.1 million as a 2022 ending. And we have given you our data. We've even sometimes cited how many people they left us or how, what the employment figure was and where we've taken it to. But all we are saying is that it is not yet done. Okay. We still have people graduating every single day. So you will still have figures coming out every day as unemployed. Now, to the matter, I am a farmer. So I feel very disrespected when Peter comes to belittle weeding and belittle farming and, and makes it as if um, people who are weeding and people who are farming do not know what they are doing. The good farmers of this country, like myself, like my grandmother, who farms maize, understand that farming is a decent job. It is a job of decency. Okay. And so if you categorize farming <coughs> uh, uh, and you call... So, so let me finish on no, that. No, quick one. Let's, let's wrap up with you, the idea. We don't have time. If you do your presentation and you feel like uh, creating a decent job does not include farming or does not include weeding, then you are undermining and insulting us. But that is not a problem. That is what they've been doing in an attempt to hoodwink Ghanaians to believe that uh, in as much as they place a ban and a freeze on unemployment, he and many NDC folks have not been able to speak to that. They place a freeze on unemployment and that canker, that mess will always be on, on them. And lastly, they were the people in this country who employed teachers, posted them for two years and paid them for three months in the shameless policy called three months policy, three months pay policy. This is the people, this is the president or the former president who told Ghanaians that he is not a magician to create jobs or to provide or to solve unemployment. Okay. This is um, the group um, of people um, who are Peter, debating us here. Uh, on Peter, so you have to react to this quickly. If you if you yeah, if you digress into any other thing, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. He's going to. No, no, no. Uh, I'll be. You are giving so, me the time. Just short one. You see the way I'll so, keep quiet. No, 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 no. We're not. We're not without, responding. Without, no, 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 no. We're not. Understand, understand, no, we're not responding understand, to anything. We're talking about the LGBTQ uh, uh, um, issue. Yes, that, yes, that's yes, our last uh, issue. Yes, no, I can bet we're not getting into any other any other topics apart from that. I think you've explained yourselves very well. No, no, no. We don't have to be getting into something. You were asking me.
this is the Peter, uh, so you said I can bet my seat here. 1.3. Yeah, so it, this is it. The new figure, you can just... Uh, well, uh, what's the new figure uh, over there? One point eight. You can check unemployment uh, 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 data. You see, just check from the, the table. And like I was saying as well... Peter, it's the, same, it's the same thing that I also have here. <laughs> so 1.8. You see unemployment. It's the same thing I have here, but it's not, it's not, it's not 1.8. So check, check the red figure. Okay, can we speak about the, the, the topic you've given for the day? 1.8. Yeah, 1.85. Unemployed. That's the figure. Can't you see that? No. You go explain, Kaya, oh, Peter. You go explain, it, Kaya. <laughs> hold on. No, no, tell no, Ghanaians no, how many no, people no, you no, employ. Please. You need to confirm this. It is there. Unemployed. Tell Ghanaians oh, the freeze on unemployment. This? Uh, can you stop this? Uh, can, can you see it now? Okay, 1.85 million. million. Unemployed. This is the 14.7. Yes, this is the 14.7. That's the 14.7 I was talking of. So that is a fact. We don't like, we are speaking to data. And I'm only telling you that the data you are talking of that the population, we need to look at the population growth. Okay, your topic Ghana doesn't matter. No, 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 no. Just a minute, just no. a minute. Ghana Satka was the referencing population? the same can, can we, year. Can we, can we, the same can we, year you no, were reporting 2.1. You, you, you planned Satka, this was also the first referencing the same year. Listen, he cannot speak to the freezing of unemployment. Listen. And therefore, the truth is that the unemployment rate over and over and over again. It is going up. Tell us how many people you employed. Now, eh... You see, KMJ, the truth it's, it's of the matter is that this LGBT, uh, when it first started in the country, we were looking out for board leadership to speak up and say that, as for Ghana, we are not, number one, religiously ready for this, culturally ready for this, traditionally ready for this. And even legally, we are not ready for this. Unfortunately, all thus far, we've not gotten that bold leadership. As far as those who are in the realm of affairs is concerned about this whole LGBTQ. And so for private member bill to be introduced in parliament to officially and formally put a restriction on this whole LGBTQ whatsoever form it is, we, some of us, thought that it's a step in the right direction. And all well-meaning Ghanaians who believe that this cannot be part of our culture, this cannot be part of our tradition, this cannot penetrate our religious affairs. And therefore, we need to stand against this form of LGBT in any kind. So we're expecting that all devices Members of parliament, the executive arm, could possibly throw their support for this bill to go through. All this world has been back and forth on this whole thing for quite some time now. And we thought that yesterday or something, yesterday, for instance, I had a, a, a great confirmation and then a, a assurance that we're going to pass this law for it to come to being so that we, at least we can move from uh, this whole discussion on LGBT and what have you. But unfortunately, uh, Honorable Afenyo Markens and other members from the NPP consistently have been introducing some gimmicks in Parliament to slow the whole processes. And yesterday, one of the interesting and so, uh, 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 you know, I don't know how to even put it, uh, attempt by Afenyo Markens in Parliament calling, moving the motion that we should let the two flag bearers of the NDC and MPP to go and have a closed door meeting on this whole LGBT. I find it so insulting to the intelligence of Ghanaians because President John Dramani Mahama has publicly stood before the clergymen in Ghana, specifically at the Eastern region, and said that he is a Christian. This whole LGBTQ is against his faith. And he is not in support of this whole LGBTQ. And he has stated that publicly. When you read uh, Leviticus chapter 22, you read Leviticus, and I wanted to quote this scripture. And it is clear, and President Mama is speaking from the biblical point. So Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22, he says that you shall not lie with a male or do not practice homosexuality, having sex with another man, as with a man, a woman, it is detestable sin. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13, he says that if a man practices homosexuality, 
having sex with another man as with a woman, both men have committed a, de a detestable act. They must both be put to death, for they are guilty of a capital offense. That says yes, the Lord. So President Mahama is saying that I am a Christian. This is my Christian faith. I am not for LGBT. It is clear. Everybody can attest to that. And we, and me personally, as a young Christian, when I listened to President Mama, I was so happy, and I stood up and I clapped for the man that this is the man we can trust. This is the man we can have confidence in. This is the principal man who can stand boldly for the principles of the kingdom business and that of our culture and our heritage. He says that he's not for LGBT, he's against LGBT, and that is clear. Have we heard the same from Vice President Mahmoud Bawumia and the leader of the MPP today that Afenyon Martin was telling us he and President Mama should go and have a closed-door meeting? Why should be, this be a closed-door meeting? If you believe in your principle as a Muslim, President Mama says, I am a Christian. You are a Muslim. If you believe in, and I know my Muslim brothers could attest to the fact that the Arab faith is also against this LGBT. So if MPP leader today, Dr. Mamou Bamiya, is also against LGBTQ, it is not about a closed door meeting. Say that publicly. Tell Ghanaians that you're also against the LGBTQ so that we can give the members of parliament some confidence for them to pass this bill. It is rather unfortunate that we are being told, and it has been suspicious that Dr. Mahmoud campaign, uh, Mahmoud Baumia campaign is being sponsored by some LGBTQ group. And that is why he's failing to Who, speak who told you? And that is the, 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 the impression out there. So these are allegations? And, yes. And, and it is out there. That is why he has not been able to come out. So why has he not been able to come out? And he's calling for a closed door meeting. Why should there be a closed door meeting on this matter? If it is against your principle, if it is against your faith, you don't need a closed door meeting to speak to this. Tell Ghanaians that you are against LGBTQ, just like President John Dramani Mahama has publicly stated. But meanwhile, we know and we have heard that his campaign is being sponsored by this LGBTQ group of people. And therefore, he can't yeah, that's come not a out. Fact. Yeah, that is the allegation out there. And that's the impression out there. Because, and, and, and it's being confirmed by the, his silence. His silence that is his on silence the issue. Confirm, confirm that. Yes, if, if, if something that you are against, if you know and you believe that it is against your principle. The, the fact that he's not said faith, anything about it. So no, why is Afeno Martin calling it? for that secret meeting on the bill? We don't need any secrecy on this issue. Okay, uh, Dennis. Well, um, Kay, I think that, you see, when we want to build a proper Ghana, uh, the level of politicking and wanting to score a political point out of everything is one thing that I have a problem with, especially when I meet young people who uh, want to shout and show that, yeah, this is the politics of it. It's problematic. Especially when they do so, parading themselves as the connoisseurs of all knowledge, when in, in fact, they, they listen, but they don't understand. Honorable Afenyo Markins, like any other parliamentarian, holds his view. But one thing is clear, that from all sides and divides, I, like many other MPP person, believe that this country is not ready, cannot support, abhors LGBTQ, whatever it is. And parliament, through a private member's bill, that is sponsored by both MPP and NDC MPs. Mm -hmm. We have an MPP MP who is part of the private member's yeah. bill. And today, he thinks that we should do politics with it. When in, in actual fact, both devices agree on the same thing. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is a staunch Muslim. He's an allergy for that matter. And you come here, and because you've been told to parade yourself and throw death at him so that you get recognition in your party, you can just do that. Sometimes, let's give some respect to some people. It is very, very utterly this, 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 this heartening that we do this. Because both parties have a common agreement that the, the, the bill will be passed. Now, let's go into the details of what Honorable Afenyo Markins, uh, what his view was on. So when you get into law, there is something we call non-custodial sentences. Yeah. And even Sharj and a lot of other stakeholders in this country have promoted that. When you go to a place like uh, the Western jurisdiction, there are some crimes or there are some wrongs. What you do, we don't put you in prison. We give you a community sentence. We let you do something. 
instead of putting you in the prison because we know the situation in our prisons. So honorable Afenyo Markings, like any other well-meaning Ghanaian, held the personal view as a parliamentarian that he agrees with the bill. His only observation and reservation is that the punishment should be non-custodial. So if you read his, his, his amendment, and the, the forefront of his amendment is the non-custodial. After holding his personal view, he comes back to say that I have withdrawn my personal view or my amendment, that my proposed amendment. Is that not democracy enough? Is that not a show of, uh, of, of democratic tenants of this country enough? Is that not what we've been promoting? Is that not what our culture tells us to do? That people can have the opinion and they can rescind on their opinions. We have never had a conversation or an argument on LGBTQ in this country. And you see, Kay, I was happy when you corrected him and you tried to put him on the right track. You see, you can throw allegations into the air and all of that, but some of them, they are extremely undeserving of people who want to lead this country. We were here in this country when we heard that, you know, remember Solomon, right? The gay activist, yeah. John Mahama's friend. Yeah. That one there, it's not an allegation. Himself, Mr. Mahama has admitted it. He, he being his friend, I'm not saying, rightly implies that he, he's in support of gay, no. Mm. We're here when an allegation came that he bought his book for $20,000. What didn't the NDC tell us? What didn't the NDC tell us? But the, so today, I come to sit here and say that an allegation that because uh, he's his friend, he's a promoter, he's the one funding his campaign. Will I, will I be a decent person to do that to Mr. Mahama? But you sit here and you parade yourself in, 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 in the cassocks of righteousness and you attempt to, to, to throw death on an analogy because you believe that that is what your party has sent you to do. When you forget that the closest friend of your flag bearer is a gay activist. But I have no right, I do not think it is right for any NDC man or MPP man to, to, to co-join Mr. Mahama and say that because his closest friend is Solomon, who is a gay activist, he is a gay activist too, or he's funding his campaign. Mm. And I will condemn any attempt by any MPP man to do that. Because whether you call it allegation whatsoever, the moment you start to demean and enter into that way, you, you call for these things onto your candidate who has no modicum of, 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 of distancing himself from Mr. Solomon. I, I perfectly have great respect for you for putting him on track. But then there is a common consensus mm. around this table, mm. around this country, that LGBTQ is unacceptable and that is why, if you look at the bill that has been sent, it has bipartisan support, and people who have reservations have raised their reservations, and conversations have been had. As simple as that. And that is where I want us to leave it, so that the good people of Ghana would at least place some respect on us. Not today wake up and say that, KMG, I have heard an allegation that you killed a, a young girl yesterday, or you raped Fafali, mm -hmm. and then I say that it is an allegation. What kind of people are we raising in this country? Is this why you want us to go, Peter? If you want us to go there, they will remind you that the closest friend of John Dramani Mahama is called Solomon. He's a gay activist and he bought his book for $20,000. Okay. All right. Um, um, so, uh, um, um, no. Yes, often your markings claims in principle that he's against this LGBTQ. However, his actions chronologically. No, but that, that has been... And, and that, that is the danger here. Yeah. No, that has been, like you rightly said, yeah. he's reviewing. He's, he's not doing it. He's not about reviewing. And, 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 and he is all his personal opinion. Not that. Now, number one, you brought some amendment. It was rejected. Second amendment, it was rejected. Third. So something that you believe in, in parliament, all members he says are against the whole thing. The so why? Oh, please, can you please allow you? you oh, just so this one, um, 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 this one up. says, that, so? oh, Peter, Peter, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> this one says, good morning, KMG and your guests. Uh, when we are talking of unemployment in Ghana, the NDC should always bow down in shame. Uh, were, they not the, were they not the party that, were they not the party that created this unemployment situation by putting an embargo on unemployment leading to thousands of nurses, teacher, trainees and uh, university graduates unemployed? NDC don't have shame. Uh, Rashid Wa West sent in that one. Is that all I have? Okay, this one says, good morning, please. Some of the customers of the collapsed banks have still not received their hard-earned money. I think I've read this already. We've read this already. Now, um, so for the news out there, yesterday, this also came very late yesterday, but I think that you need to know about it. So, Hajia for real, 
Haja Foreo has allegedly pleaded guilty to the offense of romance scam using mm -hmm. her bank account to receive funds, illicit conduct that actually ended in 2019 and would actually pay restitution of 2.1 million US dollars and also a potential jail sentence of five years. And uh, that's what we heard yesterday. It came out a bit late yesterday, but that's what we, we know as of now with the Haja for real situation. For those of you out there, in the, the sentence is yet to be decided on, but then this is the potential sentence that she may be getting and uh, the amount of money that she'll be paying for restitution. Restitution in the sense that those monies that were put into the bank account, she would have to pay uh, some of the monies back. And so uh, they've given her 2.1 million US dollars to pay back in terms of restitution and a potential sentence of five years. So hopefully, hmm, hopefully we'll get there. The NDC... Oh, um, let me go back and see if I can get some messages on WhatsApp real quick and then we can wrap it all up for today. This one says, Mr. Chairman has no uh, any other choice than to resign. He, has, he, was, he was aware that he was already being sacked. All these pictures is just to hide feeling. NDC member couldn't, uh, couldn't that maybe, uh, couldn't make that corrections in the party. Okay, let me go to the next one and see what we have there. Good morning, KMJ. With this LGBT thing, the, both the NPP and NDC are all being hypocrites. They will come out and say they are not in favor, but indoor take money from this LGBT group and play dilly dally about it. President Anand Dankwako Foro publicly said it will not happen under his watch, and Mahama also publicly say he's not in support of it. So why then all these display? There is something fishy about all this by both NDC and NPP. Good morning, my brother. On the NPP side, should stop that false pretense or our own NPP that we sleep in the bush in 2016 and 2020 to campaign for, uh, for his field and is now waiting for, is waiting to come uh, 7 December 2024. Baumia said that Mahama was incompetent now that we are, are we seeing president is arrogant, vice is arrogant, ministers are arrogant. And M MDCs are more than arrogant. The food soldiers of MPP will teach Baumia a lesson Camp 7 December, inshallah. This is diction from Wa. The contrast. Okay. Good morning. Uh, please. <laughs> Good morning. Please ask. <laughs> I didn't have to. Good morning. Please ask the NPP man to talk about the eight Ghanaians uh, kill Kaka 3D, uh, uh, 3TD skills, kill if be. this man is uh, still young to tell lies. Kindly try and make your um, mm -hmm. comments that you sent to us a bit clear so we can read them for you. Good morning, my brother. In fact, Dennis is making an intellectual analysis on the unemployment figures in the country. You don't subtract mm -hmm. figures without considering the population and graduate increase. Joe mm -hmm. Baba in Bolgatanga sent in that one. The consensus has always also been that there are projections in terms of data analysis. And so you want to be looking at a projection, what is going to happen in, in the next 10 years if people have to be getting jobs or have to be dropping out of shop and be graduating and all that. Uh, but then again, it comes back to the government. Because perfect. the government is supposed That's to be perfect. knowing all this. That's right? perfect. So good morning, <laughs> KMJ. Greetings to panelists. Okay. Uh, when will the NPP stop these baseless comparisons? Assuming without admitting that the NDC left the country in disarray. Shouldn't the NPP be telling us uh, what they have done to salvage it? What's uh, with uh, what did the NDC do? Who is leading us now? And who should be accountable? Very appear crying in Hacho sent in that one. Uh, good morning, Joy Prime. Kindly inform Dennis Apia Labi that the issue he raised about the previous government employing teachers and paying them only three months when they had been at post for more than two years is not different today. The same issue has been repeated. I'm a victim, including over a thousand other teachers who were unemployed between February and September 2022. Today. Please, host, kindly use your highly respected medium to let Ghanaians know the problem we teachers are facing. We've been talking about this here almost every time, my brother. And we, we share in your plight, you know. So, yeah, we'll continue to do so. Our assumptions of duty dates have been changed by GES for reasons unknown. This means that we were paid less from the actual months we started work. Some people worked over a year and were paid only two months. Myself, for instance, worked for six months and was paid for only two months. There are evidence to back my claim, if the need be, from uh, Akwawiba, uh, Aqua Dominic, we need from to the Ashanti you. region. We need to address it. We need we, to help we, you. Okay, it's something that you can yeah. handle, right? Okay, so we'll get there. So you can have uh, a way of sorting that out. 
Good morning, KMJ. Please ask the NPP communicator, is it now that they realize that every day people fall into the unemployment basket? We all heard the vice president loud and clear in 2016 when he was shouting on top of his voice that teachers are <laughs> suffering, doctors are suffering, nurses are suffering, market women and men are <laughs> suffering and so on. NPP shouldn't see uh, we, the Canadian youth, as fools. So we are wise now. Joseph from Keta sent in that as well. Another one over here says, good morning. Okay, I've read that already. Let me go to this one. It says, good morning, Mr. Host and your crew. My question is, if not for anything, what at all, uh, this anti-LGBTQ bill is still in delay under this current government regime. Our, uh, our posterities, well, posterities will judge us all. And Patrick Osei Kujo mails from Cape Coast. This one says, good, uh, good morning. Uh, please, I'm really enjoying your discussions uh, this morning. Please, I want to ask the NDC man, what can he mention? The number of jobs his so-called NDC created under their administration and the number of people they employed. This is the reason why I hate the NDC government and their communicators, because they don't propose any ideas, but rather concur uh, their opponent's ideas. Uh, Ghanaians are tired of their lies and their propaganda politics in the country. And from Alibaba, uh, Don Kwao on a thing sent in that one. Good morning, Mr. Host, uh, my host. Uh, in fact, I feel pity for Ghana O'Hare. This NPP guy who, uh, who from university to a political party now <laughs> have the boldness to be defending rot. Has he even struggled to get a job <laughs> for himself before? I don't blame. And that's calling. How do you know Dennis just came from uh, <laughs> <It shocks> university? <laughs> <laughs> good morning, K. Good morning to Dennis. It's clear that he is on top of issues this morning. Peter cannot sit comfortable because he knows he has lost yeah, it on the show. On. Everyone knows that the minority front bench was forced out. The Honorable Muntaka said it during their internal primaries. And... Uh, Good morning, Kay. You see the behavior of some people. Peter is kind of plain if you can't teach them, confuse, confuse them. them. <laughs> My question to That's Peter true, is, actually. he telling us that you the rights you know, employment rate is due to <laughs> sacking of employees. Uh, in my sector, mm -hmm. a lot of people have been employed. Mm -hmm. uh, the security sector has seen a lot of employment in the recent time. Mm -hmm. So Peter should tell us the cause of the rise of the unemployment mm -hmm. rate. Thank you. Uh, Peter should educate us and not confuse us. Uh, Almost got confused. <laughs> That's what Peter <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure that's okay, I realize you also almost got confused. <laughs> From KJ and Fia, I forgot. So kindly ask the NDC communicator that what basis would he use to check if someone right from SHS is recruited to security to the security services? That's good. Okay. Maybe some of the issues they will be yeah. uh, attempt yes, to yeah. address them. Good morning, KMJ. Tell the NDC man to go back and learn about data analysis. Population increases, those who lost their that. jobs due to COVID-19 and rejoin the unemployment change. Remember I, the I, impact I of the really COVID-19 was much felt in 2022 and beyond. Count. It's not about shouting your lungs <laughs> out. <laughs> I hope I got that <laughs> correct. Correct. Um, <laughs> is this space for all your programs? Yes, indeed it is. You can send your messages to them. Good morning, Joy Prime. My bro, Dennis, has spoken well this morning. In fact, the entire NPP and half are not South, East are proud of you. Please tell the NDC man to tell us the unemployment they created, uh, the employment they created no problem, during their regime no under that. the watch of John Mahama. Uh, the only trusted party to move Ghana forward is the NPP, and we are voting for them massively come 7th December. Case closed. Catherine Pong, you know, won't man crown so sent in that. Dennis, why is Baumia going to talk about LGBT uh, plus? What, why sh he support it or not? Dennis, do you support LGBT to happen <laughs> in Ghana? <laughs> I think he's stated his position on that very clear. Mr. Host, good morning. Should we start employing those who are retired and just someone who enjoyed uh, his ex crashing? <laughs> I see. Uh, good morning, KMJ. I swear, this MPP guys don't respect the Ghanaian youth. See yes. the way they talk to us as if we do live in a different planet. <laughs> exactly. Good morning. Okay, the same thing I think I've read already. So let me go to this one. It says, please, Mr. Host, can you ask the MPP guy to tell us if they are able to pay the nurses to any allowances for about 36 months now? Good morning. Uh, good morning, please. I want the NPP guy to tell us the truth. When Baumia said he was only a mate following a careless driver, mm. then how come he has chosen such person, Anakufu 
as an advisor, please, let's be serious. I think we addressed this issue yesterday. Uh, one of the MPP communicators addressed this issue. Stalin actually addressed this issue. You were asking yesterday, so maybe we don't have to get into it. But uh, that will be our conversation for this morning here on the show. Oh, but... Yes, Peter. Yes. yes. So, you so, you talk another one million. <laughs> so, <laughs> you talk another one million so, hours. Think, uh, you know, so, Peter, we are done. Oh, I need to Thank you for coming I, this I morning. Dennis, to some... that, are you okay? Uh? That you can. <laughs> when you are trying to confuse us and no, everybody no, realize. No, no, no. At, at, at the point in time, yeah. we almost all got lost. See, you see, the Until we brought the population no, 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 no. and the, the people population. are graduating. The reason I was talking are you allowing you? The government has cast them. Are we closing? The population. Well done, and that is the strange thing. Uh, thank you so oh, much for sending your messages to us here on the show. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Dennis. Dennis for coming. Thank you, Peter, for also coming. Peter was representing the NDC and Dennis represented the NPP. That will be our conversation. My name is KMJ. Rosalind Philly standing by with the latest trends. And also, we've got our relationship talk also coming as well. We have our sports update also coming. The Black Wings are supposed to be playing on Friday. Please go there in your numbers and support them. Uh, we understand that the match is going to happen. Now, yesterday, we're having... Uh, some stories going around that the Black Wings are very peeved about the fact that they've not had their bonuses and so they've decided not to play the game on Friday. But uh, speaking to Gifty Owari yesterday, she says that she was just coming from the camp of the Black Wings and they are ready to uh, engage in that competition. And so we wish them the very best and we're hoping that they will be able to beat. I have no doubt that they will beat Zambia anyway. I have no doubt. I mean, they have shown this over and over and over, and we're, we're asking the GFA to do their best, the ministry, uh, you know, to do their best and ensure that their bonuses are paid. So it will even ginger them to even score some more goals. Please go and support them on Friday at their Crossport Stadium. Big Chef Junior is also something you need to watch out for. We are very excited.